Are we on? It says we're live. Awesome. Oh. <laughs> what? You haven't like squeezed it to me. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Saturday. Welcome to Saturday's live painting demo. We are going to continue on this painting right in this area. We're going to do um, kind of corrupting the dark colors here to make them more muted and subtle and um, even more blurry so that that pushes it into the distance. So this live painting demo is all about uh, painting in depth into a painting. And so I have the underpainting done so I kind of know where I want things to be but those colors are all very too dark. So I've got my knife edge flat brush and I'm trying to keep the shape by going back and forth on my palette to keep that flat shape so that I have all sorts of different edges on the brush to use in this kind of smaller area. And I'm just going to be kind of coloring. Just coloring within some of these blocked areas that I've already created. But what I'm trying to do is find a dark color that's not as dark as the darkest color in the foreground. I want the darkest color in this area to be probably about a mid-tone color in this area. And so everywhere that I have a really dark color, I'm going to turn it to this color on my brush. And so if I, if I use the shape of the brush properly, I can, I can do really small marks with the corner, with the tips, and I can make wider strokes if I put it this direction. So I have a friend this week that private messaged me was saying, where do you get your painting supplies? And so I just want to let you know that on the bottom of every one of my videos, there's a place that says description. And then if you click on the description, and um, I think it says more, there's also a little tab that says more. And then if you click on that, there will be a link that will say um, to buy painting supplies, click here. And so if you want to buy the painting supplies in your own town, you can look at that list on my Amazon link just to see the items that are on the list. Um, it's called Seascape Painting Materials, once you click that link to Amazon. And then you can either buy them right there and they'll deliver them to your door, or you can go to a, an art supply store in your town and buy them there. Then at least you'll see the actual items that I'm talking about when I'm painting. This is one of the items. This is a stay wet palette. Keeps your acrylic paints uh, wet longer. And these flat brushes is on the list. And this um, nice water well is on the list. What I like about the water well is there is, um, there's like some ribs on the bottom so that we, when you're cleaning your brush, you can actually wipe your brush on the ribs on the bottom and it really cleans them quickly. I forgot to mention my, my niece Rachel is with us and she can answer any questions. Is there anyone watching with us? There's six people. Wonderful. Thank you for joining us everyone. Let me know if there's anything I can answer specifically for you. Okay, so as you noticed, I took sort of all the dark spots and changed the tone to this, this color. And I'm going to use that same color and an even smaller brush. This time I'm actually going to use my um, detail brush. It's just a kind of a, I don't know if you can see that, very fine detail brush to get some really fine branches up here. And just keep in mind when you're doing branches of trees that are quite far away, Sometimes it looks like the branches aren't even attached to the trunk and that's okay to leave them like that. It makes them look more realistic, strangely. If you connect every branch to the trunk, sometimes it just looks um, too uniform or something. And so just do a couple wisps like that that are kind of hanging outside the trunk area. And these branches need to be super, super skinny. So what, how I'm doing that is, do you notice I'm putting my pinky on the canvas? 
so that I can control. If I didn't do that, I'd, my, my hand might be shaky. So I'm actually controlling where I'm putting the brush this way. And then I'm using just the tippiest tip of that, that uh, detail brush and I'm barely touching the canvas. I'm not letting the bristles bend. I'm just using the tippiest tip of that to make the finest little lines. It's a good way to control this type of brush. Otherwise, what will happen is you bend the brush and then it makes a big fat line. And I don't want that. The other thing you can do is um, wet your paint. Just dab it into your water and make a little pile of very, very wet paint. And then I use my paper towel every time and wipe off a bit of the, the paint so that it's just a little, the littlest tiny bit of paint on there. Do we have any questions? We just have conversations between two people who are talking about Hungarian Rhapsody too. Really? We yeah. took time to talk or to um to listen to that song. Yeah, because one that it was from Yeah, go ahead. Tom and Jerry. Mm-hmm. We <laughs> played in Tom and Jerry, which I did not know. So what's it called again, the song? Hungar Hungarian Rhapsody Two. Hungarian Rhapsody Two. It's one a very watched was just played by somebody from Neighborhood. Right, it's a very popular song. Wow, very dramatic. <laughs> yeah, and wow, it takes a lot of talent to play that song. I think, yeah, we liked it, right, Rachel? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> well, I liked it. <laughs> Can I speak for you? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was very. It's like so weird because it has so many genres in one. I feel like it gets mm -hmm. like super quiet and very like kind of slow, and then it goes like. Super fast and like pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. I could definitely not play that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Putting in the chunk back in here. So, this is going to be my darkest color. It's kind of finicky. I don't know how interesting this is to watch because there's just so little happening but with this little tiny brush somebody said that they were called bob ross's they were 25 minutes in you have no idea what he was doing and in the last five minutes it was like magic bringing it all together <laughs> Yeah, I guess if you have the patience to sit through that, <laughs> this might this might turn into magic too if you wait long enough. <laughs> yeah. Well, I find lots of people just skip like all the way to the end. Yeah. Of something. They're like, I just want to know. Yeah. Know what, what does it, it turn like. out like? Yeah. Well, the nice thing to do up in the the very top of of some of the most distant branches is go to an even lighter color almost even a blue color, like just adding a little bit of blue to the green. And I'm going to see what happens if I do that, because usually I like that effect. And so sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, so we'll see together if it does what I'm hoping it will do. So it's almost like an atmospheric thing. It kind of shows distance in the atmosphere. Even some of these branches were quite a bit lighter than others in the reference photo. So I'll just put a couple of Really, really light ones around the perimeter up top there. Um, lighten up some of these ones too.
I actually can't tell from this distance if, if I've gone light enough. So I'm going to walk across the room and look back. Yeah, so what I'm doing is I'm comparing sort of the tones and the overall kind of feeling of this compared to this. And I'm not sure if you guys can see this corner, yeah. So the darkest darks in this corner and the darkest darks in this corner shouldn't be showing here. I should be painting over all of those darkest darks. There's a couple little spots. I'm gonna take away. When was, how long have you been painting for? I have been painting for about seven years, very seriously. Um, yeah. I know some people have been painting their whole life, but I've been creating my whole life. Definitely been a very creative person. Loved doing crafty things and um, pastels and drawing and sketching and, and other things like that. But really, painting is sort of my newest creative thing. I've actually um, done a lot of house design. That's what I have been doing for about 20 years. And it's super creative too and really fun. I always love to watch a, because I think you had this like, um, applet, it was something that you had on your computer for like building kind of what it would look like, like yes. a, a, kind of this 3D model. Yeah. And I always thought it was so cool because I was like, I want to I wanna do that. I want to yeah. build a little house in the 3D yeah, yeah, it, on your computer. Yeah, it's really cool. It's called Chief Architect. And, um, yeah, you can walk around the house. It's kind of like like an adult's version of Minecraft. Yeah. <laughs> like super awesome yeah. and very detailed and very elaborate so that a person can see what their house will look like completely before paying a builder to build it. Oh, this is not light enough. Okay, so I'm trying to find my, my lightest color now. And so I'm just mixing a bunch of white into... The greens that I was using for my dark color. But it's not coming out as light as I need it to because keep in mind acrylic paints always dry darker. And so I'm thinking these colors will be too dark by the time they dry. So I need more white. Titanium white. Oh, I think those crows are Doing that thing again. Are the crows back? Yeah. Crazy crows. So weird. Okay, so I'll try this again. See if this is light enough. So if anybody, um, hmm. I wonder if anyone's going to want to try to paint this, try to paint along. If they would, I could somehow get the reference photo. Maybe, oh, that'd be fun. maybe in the community tab, I could put the reference photo there, and a person could print that up and try to paint it and show us what they come up with. Yeah, just a little collage of how everybody. That would be cool to like see everybody's different art styles. Yeah. Just to like see, because everybody has like their own version of. Yeah, how they see how they, things. Yeah. yeah. And that's the beauty of doing it in la for landscapes because you can do that and it would still look cool. And this is supposed to be over here. A couple little squiggles. a really hard time talking doing this one there's just some really fine detail and I don't know the the more I'm looking for the detail the the harder I'm finding it is to talk <laughs> it's hard to be like doing one thing that's very specific and doing another I'm awful at multitasking yeah it, I don't know what the fine detail is like especially hard I guess I'm I'm really really searching my you know I'm searching my observation skills to find some really interesting details that I don't want to miss out on. Because a lot of times I just kind of fake the painting, I fake a lot of it, 
but I'm always looking for the tiniest little things that is like, oh yeah, that totally, you can't leave that bit out. And because this part of the painting is so small, I'm having a hard time finding those little details. Okay, this might help. So I put some of this light color down by the beach. Now it's too green to be down here, but I'm gonna put it in right now because I have this on this color on my brush, and then I'm gonna come and lighten it with uh, kind of more gray tones once I clean off my brush. But I just wanna get these shapes in here while I'm thinking of it and while I'm seeing that bit of detail. Somebody asked, are there any paintings that are like your, ins painters that are like your inspiration? Like who are your right. painting inspirations? Um, I really like a, a lady named Corey Creed from Vancouver. Really, really like her work. Um, there's another lady, I really love her work. Uh, her name's Marlene Vermeulen. And so these are Canadian artists. Um, there's another lady called Greta Guzik. Um, and, um, hmm, who else? Lots and lots. These are, and of course, Bob Ross. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird how Bob Ross is like, so many people love him, even people that like don't even like painting, people that have no interest in painting, yeah, still love watching. His well, and he was like a psychological genius, too. Like, he always had little quips and little things to make yeah. you feel better as yeah. he's painting. Yeah, he was almost like a counselor, yeah, telling you, like helping you to like see things in a positive way. <laughs> like, you know, there's no mistakes, only happy little accidents, yeah. And, um, yeah, just such a positive guy. Apparently he was a in the army for years and years. Did you know that, Rachel? Really? Yeah. He was wow. like a, I, I don't know if he's a sergeant or what, but but yeah, he was such a soothing guy. I mean, what a voice. Yeah, just a very calming voice. Mm -hmm. There are only some people that have that level of like soothing voice. Yeah. Somebody said that they find it interesting that you used to do architecture, but then moved into painting, which they think is more abstract. So, like, mm. I guess it's... I mean, I feel like it's kind of similar in a way. Mm -hmm. A lot of architects um, either start out as artists, like maybe, and... Um, I mean, as children, but turn it into something practical because they re maybe they're, they are a practically minded person that, you know, everybody needs somewhere to live. Um, but yeah, I know a lot of architects that are very good artists as well. I feel like they have just a certain eye for things, you know, mm -hmm. to be an architect and an artist. Yeah. I feel like it's kind of a similar, you have to have a similar eye for it. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay, I want to make it more misty and even more deep. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to change some of the colors in just behind here, kind of into a tealy misty color, and leave this stuff, this dark color. I need a couple more strokes of this dark color. Where? Somewhere down here. I can change my brush but yeah I want I want this this tree and these bushes to kind of look like they're in front of the ones behind and so if I turn it into a tealy a light teal misty color that should do it so the teal that I have is um, it's like a turquoise actually it's a turquoise phthalo see how that does. I'm going to put it with a whole bunch of titanium white and a little bit of, um, what's the green? Hooker's green. Hooker's green is kind of a dull, dark green, but I'm just going to use a tiny little bit of it to try to muddy down the teal. Like, I don't want the teal to be so vibrant. I want it to be muted. 
but it still needs to be teal. <laughs> so that's why I'm putting the hooker's green because the hooker's green is kind of a muddy, muddy green. So I'm mixing a muddy green with teal and white and hopefully it'll give me the effect I'm looking for. Yeah, that's like my favorite color. It's only you to do that color that you like. Really? Yeah. It's almost like a sea green or something, yeah. isn't it? Like it's sea foam green or something by the time I mix it all. So this is what it ends up looking like. And then it's going to lighten a lot. I'm going to take a lot of it off my brush and just see what happens when I... Hmm, I'm a little worried it's not going to be dark enough, but you just don't know until it actually dries. Like it's actually looking a bit too light. So a little bit more of that hooker's green. I just want this whole back stuff to disappear a little bit into the background. I still think it's too light. It's crazy how like thinning out those trees just made the entire painting look like so different. On the last live or this one? Yeah, well, because before the trees were a bit like the, the trees that you're doing right now, mm -hmm. they were like thicker and kind mm -hmm. of, you know, bushier. But now that you've like thinned them down, I feel like it blends a lot better with the other trees mm -hmm. in the painting. Because before the other trees, they're very like more realistic looking, like they have the light in between them. But uh, the other ones, the background ones, they were thicker. So I think this pulls it all in together. Yeah. I have to walk across the room to see what's happening. Is that pushing into the distance? It is a little bit. Maybe not as much as I'd like it to be, but maybe I need to use my smaller brush now. Again, back to the detail brush. To get into really finicky little spots. So comparing this part of the painting to this part of the painting, it definitely looks like they're two different, kind of on two different planes. That's what I'm trying to trying to accomplish. This plane is much closer and should be kind of more vibrant have more lights, more darks. This should kind of, the dark should be um, lighter and the light sh lights should be darker. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So the, the contrast should be less here. Higher contrast here, less contrast between the two colors here. And then the fact that they, even the darks are a different dark and the lights are a different light helps keep, push that into the distance, which is the purpose of this live, is to show you, um, yeah, how to paint distance how to paint things that show depth. And on my reference photo, it actually isn't even as much as what I'm painting. Like I'm actually painting more lights into that than it shows here. Because photos um, don't always, unless you have like that f-stop thing on your camera, it doesn't always create that distance in a photograph. So I'm kind of trying to create it with my paint. Do we have any other questions or comments? Not yet. Not yet. I'm just putting a few little treetops back here. Make it look a bit more like a forest behind there. Be careful not to overdo that. And now I'm just kind of going over all of the, um, looking for that sort of same tone where that same tone should be 
anywhere else since I've got this color on my brush. It's one of the, the tricks of um, painting more quickly is just using what you already have on your brush in as many places as you can find on the canvas. And normally, like if I wasn't doing a live, I'd be putting this color like wherever I see it on the whole canvas. But because you guys are watching, I'm just focusing right here in this little bit. tree back there. Tiny nice little branches. Just a little guy. Yeah, it's just little. It's so cute. <laughs> little did I know when I was seven watching Bob Ross that I would live in a day and age <laughs> where I could show people how to paint. It's pretty cool. Where we can all just um, share our talents. <laughs> I know I always I love painting, but mm -hmm. it's it, for me at least it takes a lot of like multitasking because I'm like having like the reference and then I'm like I don't even know where to start. Like I never know if I should like because I used to do very like I don't even know I was not good at like finding highlights and mm -hmm. like anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd kind of just paint at, like everything kind of at once mm -hmm. and it really just would not work out at all because I didn't know like even just your strategy of like getting one color and painting it everywhere where you see it yeah and the next color and painting it everywhere you see it is like a much more like definitely a better strategy than just kind of throwing a bunch of paint <laughs> on there hoping it turns out well and you have to have so much patience with yourself because yeah, just like it, by doing this method, you have to, you can't, like, um, like the, the comment about Bob Ross, how it all came together in the last five minutes. <laughs> like often that's the same way with this method. Like you just kind of, you think, what am I doing? This is just random. Like I'm just blobbing colors over here, over there, over here. <laughs> but then eventually it does, the randomness starts making sense. It's definitely coming. It's coming. It's coming. I'm trying to decide when to stop. <laughs> <laughs> when to like end. Yeah, because the because um, if I paint all the details I see in my reference photo, then it's not going to look in the distance anymore. Like the distance, distance part of the painting should look kind of unfinished because that's what pushes it into the distance a bit more. And so I think I'm going to put a few highlights in the very um, front, like a few highlights maybe in this area right here, so that this whole section jumps forward, then this section is the next section, and then this is the, the farthest section. And so yeah, I think I'm just going to do a few highlights on this little chunk, and then we'll call it done for, for this live. So if anyone has any questions that they want to get answered, um, we're probably going to be finishing up yeah. in like last minute question yeah five minutes or so or less um, I need some yellow bad yellow light to do some of that the highlights there and cat yellow light mixed with titanium white mostly titanium white and cat yellow light It's surprising which some colors, um, they just take over the white so much that you, yeah, the, the one color I buy the most of, just so you know, is titanium white. <laughs> because it turns into, when I start mixing with things, it turns into a lot of colors. Um, <clears throat> and so it's kind of the base. So if you're buying, if you're trying to figure out what to buy, make sure you always have the largest amount of white. And thankfully this golden paint that I use, it does go a long way. It's quite expensive. Like some of the bottles are 20, 30, even $40 a tube. Um, but it does last a long, long time. 
Because yeah, especially such, when you're not using like a whole ton of it. Yeah, and it's such um, thick paint that you have to mix it with water. So again, then it kind of extends its life. Yeah, the paint we would use for uh, our class at the high school, would be, it would be like these big tubs really? of like acrylic paint. And mm -hmm. you just kind of like pour it in. Like people used it so much. Oh, no. Because really like... It was super it, cheap? Or yeah, like, it was like oh. super cheap stuff. Like very like much, like you probably buy it like in bulk on a store. Like yeah. it was... Like, was it thick? Was it like toothpaste or no? No, uh -huh. no. It was very 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 liquidy like if oh. you added water it would dilute it like super super quickly oh okay so it was very cheap stuff i see yeah this is definitely like toothpaste like this is so thick that i only have to put a bit on my canvas or my palette and then mix like you know quite a bit of water into it to make to make it flow but then that means i've got a lot to to work with for the longest time in my tube still Somebody's asking about, shouldn't it have more shadowing in the background, I guess. More shadowing? Hmm. Well, I definitely, I definitely like to have more shadowing here and here because I want that to pop, but I think there's enough in the background. Um, I mean, the rocks, I could do some, some more kind of detailing in the rocks, just little tiny dabs of some shadowing. And actually, maybe not shadowing. Actually, high, I need to highlight some of the rocks, and that will sh um, some of those mi mi mid colors will um, turn up as shadows. Yeah. What do you think? Is there a spot that you think needs a shadow? I feel. I mean, I'm like I'm the worst, one of the worst people. Like, <laughs> like a painting. I'm like Uncle Jeff. I'm like. <laughs> if you only just. I mean, I feel like, I mean, even just like looking through your screen, I feel like there is a lot of, I think there's good contrast from the front to the back. Like you can see that it's different. That it's, yeah, that it's yeah. different. You definitely want it to be different. Like it's almost like there's this like invisible line right here mm -hmm. where all those blue colors stop, stop coming back here. And then, I don't know, it just gives you that kind of like, okay, this is one plane and this is another plane altogether. That's what I'm going for. I'm going to do a couple more little touches right here on the beach with very little, like I'm wiping most of the paint off with my brush. Um, yeah, there it is, like that. So it kind of looks like there's some unevenness and some rocks and stuff there. And I think I'm going to quit it at that point. So if anyone has any one more last minute question, we can answer that. And just so you know, we're probably not going to do another live until next Saturday. We've been experimenting with um, lives on Wednesdays and lives on Saturdays. And we found that Saturdays are better. Much more active. Yeah, much more active and, and more doable. And so that's what we're going to do. So next time we do a live will be next Saturday. And it should be at noon. I will do an update partway through the week just to make sure, just to confirm if it's at noon or not. Or if we have to change the time slightly like we did today. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that's how you paint depth into a painting with acrylics.